Hi, and welcome to another episode of Steve's Film Vault. In this episode, we're going to be talking all about stabilizing your camera. Up to this point, we've been dealing mainly with just DSLR cameras shooting photos. We're going to talk a little bit about the video aspect of it as well uh, with the use of tripods. Uh, if you are shooting anything under a 60th of a second in a still photo, maybe you could stay still for a 40th, but if you, once you start getting into those low shutter speeds, you're going to want to stabilize your camera. So we're going to talk about all the different ways to stabilize it. I do want to spend a good amount of time, however, on the tripod. There are two different tripods we're going to be using. Uh, the main tripod is your basic photographic tripod. The reason that sets it apart from a uh, video tripod is the fact that the head not only does a pan and a tilt, you can also flip it to portrait mode. The other aspect with this is that uh, a photo tripod does not need a special, um, a special head. We use what's known as a liquid head for uh, video and that allows you to do a, a very smooth pan and a very smooth tilt. Uh, with a photographic tripod, there is no fluid and as a result, what winds up happening is if you try to pan or tilt, the image gets very shaky. So if you are shooting video, do not use a photographic tripod if you plan to do a pan or a tilt shot. Plan it out ahead of time where you can avoid those kind of moves with your camera. You're not going to get a very smooth or very professional look with a standard tripod if that's the case. Uh, we'll take a look at the video head in just a moment. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and open this thing up. you got to be careful when you are handling tripods because they can be damaged quite easily if you are not careful. All of them have certain things in common. One is that they usually have feet, some don't, but most of them have feet that go between spikes and rubber feet. Just keep the rubber feet out for now. Uh, only use the spikes if you're on like dirt or grass or something where you kind of need to have it dig in a little bit better. There are tension clips on these that allow you to unlock the legs to be able to lengthen them. So we're gonna go ahead and lengthen them all the way out right now. And I like to open these up with the legs together because when you're done opening them up, you can double check to make sure that all three legs are the exact same length. In fact, I'll mess it up here on purpose. If I basically had uh, opened them up and I didn't have the legs together, I wouldn't notice that one leg is much shorter than the other two. And that will give you an uneven photo. So I've done it this time. They are all the same length. I want to make sure that this tension screw in the middle is loose before I open this up. If that was tight, it could actually pull the legs right out of the body of the tripod. This other part here um, is called the elevator. And if I loosen this tension screw right here, it allows me to raise the elevator. Every function of a tripod has a tension screw or a tension clip that will lock it back into place. Do not try to change any function of that tripod without loosening that tension screw first. So before I use the elevator, I need to make sure I loosen it, tighten it when I'm done, just finger tighten. Now for the pan, this tension screw will allow me to loosen to do a pan. Uh, once again, do not use this pan for video. Uh, lock that back up. Now for the tilt, the handle is the actual screw, so by twisting the handle, it'll allow me to, to do that. And then I have a screw back here, which allows me to do the portrait mode for the camera. Let's go ahead and put a camera on this tripod so you can see what that would look like. This would be landscape mode, and this is putting the camera in portrait mode. Now, tripods have what's known as a quick release plate. The quick release plate I screwed onto the bottom of my tripod. If you notice, it is beveled on the sides, and the plate on the top of the tripod is also beveled. So I would uh, slide that into one side, push it down, and then lock it into place. Once again, to see that better, once it's in, it gets locked into place. 
make sure you give it a light shake to make sure that it is completely locked before you do let go of that camera. Let's go ahead and put together the uh, video tripod for a moment. Once again, uh, when you do open the legs up too, remember gravity is our friend. Open them up with the legs pointed down. It is pretty entertaining to watch students try to open it with the legs pointed up, but it is much easier to have the legs pointed down. Once again, make sure that the feet are, uh, that the spikes are not showing. And now we can go ahead and open this one up. Once again, we still have the same functions. We do have a tension screw uh, for the elevator. We also have a tension screw for the pan and a tension screw here for the tilt. Now, inside of this head, I won't go into a lot of detail, but inside the head, there are little chambers and there's a kind of an oil liquid that's inside of those chambers. So as you pan, I can use one finger and it's a very, very, very smooth pan. Same thing with the tilt. If I loosen this slightly, I have a very smooth tilt function. Now, the only difference is a video head will not flip to portrait mode. There's no need if you're shooting video because you will always be shooting landscape. So that is the difference between the video head and the photography head. So the key things to always remember, always loosen the tension screws before making any changes. One other thing that you should always do too is when you are shooting, especially when you're shooting video, it's always a good idea to have one leg in front of you and the two legs on either side of you. And the reason for this is simple. You will not kick the tripod if you have a space to stand. Once again, gravity is our friend. As I'm putting the legs away, I'm tilting the tripod in the opposite direction. So I'm not fighting the legs, the legs are closing. And that's basically all it takes to operate and put together a video and photo tripod. The next thing I have here is my Joby Gorilla Pod. And the Gorilla Pod actually, this one actually has a quick release as well. So if I push the button in, I got my quick release plate. And uh, Gorilla Pods are great for a number of reasons. You can use them as a mini tabletop tripod. You can also use them as an impromptu selfie stick. And the nicest thing about these legs, they could be attached to tree branches and other devices to be able to get the shots that you're looking for. So there's a, a lot of versatility in a gorilla pod that you would not have with a normal tripod. Another real handy tool to have is like a bean bag. This is a bean bag I just kind of threw together. I had the zipper pouch. I literally bought a bag of beans to throw in it. And a bean bag works if you have, um, say, an unstable area such as a rock that you want to use. I'll use this as my pseudo rock. I can leave the bean bag on top, and then I can balance the camera on top of that until I get the camera balanced to how I want to be able to shoot. So now I'm ready to go, and I can go ahead and set my timer and shoot that way, or very carefully hit my trigger. But bean bags are extremely versatile, very handy especially if you're trying to travel light. Now there are two different types of straps. Now the camera usually comes with its own strap. I don't usually like to use the strap that it came with, but as far as my students at school, I do require them to wear that. Tourist mode around the neck so they can go hands-free. And uh, basically this is very handy um, when shooting. And if it's me and I have one of these, a lot of times I'll wear it over the shoulder because it's just sometimes a little bit easier for me to be able to have my hands free there too and I can just pull up to shoot. Problem with this is it will slip off the shoulder and you could drop it. I did find online, I got this through Amazon and I'll put the particulars below. This is from Altura and it is a uh, quick strap. And this one is actually pretty slick because this you can wear it bandolero style. The camera hangs comfortably at your side. When you're ready to go, you pull it up and it slides along this strap. You're good to shoot. 
You can drop it back down. If you have a second camera, you can have your hands on that as well. So oftentimes I might be shooting to camera. I'll have this one with uh, my standard lens. This one set up on, with my telephoto. And the nice thing about this is it does have a quick release as well as a safety tether. So there's no chance of me accidentally dropping my camera. Uh, so that is by Altura. The nice thing about this Altura strap as well is that it'll, it has a um, pouch in the strap that allows you to keep extra SD cards. And I also have a lens cleaning cloth in there as well. So that is uh, uh, a very smart way to go as far as to carry your camera. So that's it for this episode of Steve's Film Vault on image stabilization. Be sure to hit the like button and also subscribe. If you have any suggestions or any questions that you may have, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will definitely get back to you. If you have any thoughts or ideas of what you would like to see in future episodes, please post that as well and we'll get to that as soon as we can. So once again, happy shooting and we'll see you next episode.